Hello YouTubers, for my longtime followers and subscribers, welcome back both of you. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Eric Carlson. Uh, my channel here has pretty much been created by this truck here. That is my 73 F350 turned into F100 Grand Marquis. Long story on that, but um, for my followers, don't worry, that truck will be coming back, more videos will be coming soon. But what I'm here to make a video for now is I'm going to build furniture. And you might be saying, oh, I didn't know you were a furniture builder. I'm not. But, as uh, the wife and I have been kind of updating our home and including new furniture, um, We've been shopping and shopping all this furniture, looking at these nice, kind of custom, i.e. expensive pieces. And she found a bookshelf that she wanted, and it was a nice piece, but I was just staring at this $1,500 price tag, baffled. Because as I looked at it, it was one inch square tubing, welded together, with wood pieces put on top of it. And I'm like, I can build this. Um, I'm not a woodworker, but dumb luck, a buddy of mine who you'll see in a, uh, later on in this series is. So we got together, it's like, okay, I'll do the steel work, you do the woodwork, here you go. So uh, let me show you what we're going to build. And this is what we're going to build it with. This is just... Uh, one inch square tubing, uh, 16 gauge or 16th uh, inch thick uh, square tubing. I bought this at a metal supplier in town. You can obviously buy the same steel at um, Home Depot or Lowe's, but I will say it is much cheaper going to a steel or tubing supplier. So here you go. Here's the steel we'll use basic tools that we'll be using to get on with it. Yeah, I just want to throw out here a couple uh, real quick top tips. So this is a uh, Harbor Freight special and I'm not going to bag on Harbor Freight but you get what you pay for, let's put it that way. And this works perfect for what I'm doing. I got it cheap. I think it was 100 bucks. And then I had it like a 30% coupon. So there you go. So it works good. But right back there, you can adjust the, um, the angle. And since we're doing 90 degrees, you would set it at zero. But if you look, come on now. It's off a little bit, so be sure to take a square, make sure it's square. Uh, you know, make a couple cut, uh, practice on a co uh, some scrap metal, make sure you got square, lock it down, you're good to go. Another one is if you have another Harbor Freight special uh, vehicle dolly and you got one that has a gimp wheel on it or something, don't throw it out yet because it works perfect for supporting the metal you're working on. Okay, so once you get all your pieces cut down to the length you want, one of the things you have to do is you have to come back through and clean all these uh, boogers off the ends, make them nice and uh, you know flush. I like to smooth back a few inches so that it's nice and clean for welding. So as you can see, clean those off. And that's one of the disadvantages of using a cutoff wheel 
like this versus say if you were using a bandsaw with a metal cutting blade, you'd probably have much cleaner cuts. And there you go, nice crisp edges to work with. All right, so here we have it all cut down, laid out where I want the shelves to go. Um, what I have done, you saw that I, I cleaned up all the ends on the individual pieces, and then I did the same thing of where it's going to attach to. Uh, I did it on, you know, where it's going to attach to, then the front and back as well. One thing that I want to mention is look over your steel uh, if you're really picky or you want the pretty side facing forward because you might have seams or blemishes like here you have a seam uh, you might have blemishes in the steel so look over your steel decide what side you want to be the front and you'll see I ground on each one of these which side I want in front so I've got it picked out you know got it all oriented the way I want it so now this is the time the mock-up stage that it's definitely good to lay it out how you want it Go ahead and put marks down. Uh, I just put marks down at where I want the bottom of the shelf to attach to and lay it out. So right now, it's everything's cleaned up. It's laid out how I want it. Everything's square. I can't stress enough how much time it's worth mocking it up now and getting it exactly squared up the way you want it versus jumping into tack welding it and finding out that the shells are crooked or some me measurements off somewhere. So uh, we're all set to go now, so I'm going to go ahead and start tack welding this thing up. Alright, so here it is, all uh, just tack welded together, and now is your champ now is the best time to go ahead and see if everything's level. Um, of course you have to find a level floor to begin with. You see I had to shim a level to make the floor level so that this would be level. But uh, what I like to do is start out with the outside parameter, you know, because obviously the, the outside of the frame is most important. Um, so, you know, you look good here, you look good over here, top, bottom, and then you can come in and check your actual shelves themselves. Um, of course, everything, mine's spot on, 100%. Sometimes you'll get lucky, say this one's off a little bit and this one is off the same amount, but yet this one's level, you can just knock these spot welds off, they just re-tack it and get it there. Um, so anyways, like I said, this one's absolutely perfect, it's spot on, it's level in every possible way, so I'm going to go ahead and finish, uh, finish welding this one up. And we'll come back, here we are, uh, got it all finished welded now. Uh, like I talked about before, if you had to make any adjustments, cut out your uh, cut off your tack welds, adjust, get it where you want, and boom, come back, finish weld. Now you have a couple of options here. You can, I don't know, it depends if you're if you want the finish look nice and smooth, or if you're wanting the rustic look, what have you. Um, you could just leave it tack welded, or you could do what I did, um, weld it around each side so it's way way strong 
The only downside of that is now you're creating a little lip, so your woodwork is going to have to really be precise and maybe um, grooved a little bit to fit around your welds. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right. There we go. So like I said, I smoothed these all out. Um, that's just that's just my personal preference. I like it welded all the way around, and then I like to come back and smooth things out. Uh, a couple of reasons for that, besides the added strength, is the more you come in and clean all these welds, the uh, just like bodywork or anything else, the more finish work you put into it, the better results you'll end up with later on. So when I go to, I plan on getting this powder coated everything should lay real nice. So it's just personal preference on what you like. And also as you're going through and you're smoothing things out, um, you know, maybe things aren't perfectly smooth or one side's better than the other. Here's your chance to actually feel all the metal, get a, uh, you know, feel for what you think you want to be the front and what you want to be the hidden, if you will, be on the inside. So now, you just got all this work done, and you're just like, yay, it's perfect, and the only bad news now is you need to make another one. So I just happen to have one laying around. Now I have two. So here's, here, this is the real pain in the ass part, to be honest with you. Part of my French is the most critical part about this is that they are absolutely true with each other. Um, if you were mass producing these and you had them in a jig, obviously you could pump these out all day and they'd be perfect. But, you know, you get a, one end that's not level or maybe it is level but it's you know a couple sixteenths higher than the other one the boards aren't going to fit on it right so you have two choices uh, either be Johnny on the spot and build two absolute perfect ones or when you get one finished up exactly how you want lay this frame on top of the other and then stick all your shelving bars on top of it held in place with magnets or however you want to do it in that way you can make sure that they're going to be perfect. If all those fails you have one crooked shelf well at least it's uniform crooked there you go. So these are all finished well now I need to connect them and that's what all these guys here are for. Okay, for this part, if you are uh, love using a square and a magnet and TIG welding, you are in for a treat because this takes a while. It's uh, 16 little pieces. Uh, right now, everything is just tack welded in place. So I've got those square and going both ways. And so now what I'll do is I'll take that, lay it on top, it'll all be tack welded again, so then I can stand it upright and make sure everything's square and final weld it. And here we are. So what I've done is I just laid the uh, matching half on top of all the bars, and then I went and tack welded only the four corners, so this bar, that one, and the same two up top. So uh, just tack weld them in here because as much as I have faith that they're true, you won't really know till you stand it up right. So a couple things I use, you know, obviously I use my magnets here and square. So a couple things I can do at least to get myself close is Obviously put my square in here, so if we're good here, 
That's safe. Another method to double check myself as well is so this particular shelf is one inch above the ground. So this is flush there and here as well as here then that's a good indication so regardless I just tack weld everything that way now I can stand it up stand it upright and come back measure them if they're nice and square boom come back through and weld those up solid and then start the task of the inner bars again all the inner bars I'll just tack weld you know get them good and level tack weld them and that way to finish weld everything I can lay it down and roll it over whatever I have to do to make it easiest and most comfortable for welding all right I'm gonna throw in a little tip here I won't call it a top tip because everything would be perfect you wouldn't be in this situation but uh, you may have some you know you're coming back through you got one side all tack welded you're tacking the other side together now and as you work on this you have pretty big kid you know pretty big gap to fill like so okay so you could sit there and try to bear hug it while keeping it level and tacking it all at the same time but let me show you a little something that works you can take a cargo strap that you don't care about anymore and cinch it up a little bit you know you don't have to you know kill the thing but you can at least pull it so everything pulls up tight like so so now you're not fighting it and you can actually tweak it a little bit since it is being squeezed you may not even need a magnet but I still like to use it to keep everything square where I want it there you go easy fix here we are after a couple minutes hours days of cleaning up my welds and uh, finalizing everything my work here is done steel part. Now it's going to be a couple of, we're going to go off for a couple of field trips to get uh, the wood for it, and then get it power coated, and last but not least will be the end result. So stay tuned till next week.